Order. Senator Hanson has submitted a proposal understanding Order 75 today. It is shown at item 13 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? Four, four and a half, five, seven. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All good. No. All good. All right. Seven and three quarters. Well done. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's uh, debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly. Sen Hello, Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. Sorry, Senator Hanson, I just need you to move the motion, please. I move the Thank motion. You. The matter of urgency. Senator Hanson, you have the call. Thank you very much. I rise to ask the Senate to affirm its support for free and fair elections, which accurately reflect the intention of Australian voters. Prior to the 2016 federal election, the Senate amended federal electoral laws to ensure voters retained control of their preferences. The result in 2016 was a Senate with a strong crossbench the Australian people wanted. This followed previous Senate election outcomes, which defied public expectations. Those outcomes had Glenn Drury's name all over them. We all know who this man is and how he has made his name over the years as a so-called preference whisperer. In the past week, reports in the Herald Sun newspaper have served to remind us of his talent and of the need to always be vigilant in the defence of free and fair elections. It hasn't been the best week for Glenn Dury, I can tell you. It's been recorded admitting he has worked with the Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews to deliver a crossbench Labor can work with. He's on the record saying he manipulates upper house group voting tickets to mislead Victorian voters and direct their preferences to left-leaning minor party candidates, all in effort to keep Premier Andrews in power. He even admits to creating a fake party, the Sack Dan Andrews Party, in his effort to mislead voters. The Victorian Premier initially denied any involvement, but it's been confirmed Mr Jury has been working closely with his office in the lead up to this year's state election. It's telling that the Premier has resisted many calls to reform Victorian electoral laws and get rid of the upper house group voting tickets. Now we know why. Premier Andrews has well and truly been a law unto himself. He has been the most unaccountable government in the history of Victoria with a long list of scandals. IBAC's referrals and political scalps under his watch. Branch stacking, the botched hotel quarantine program, fire services reform, printing rorts, misuse of parliamentary allowances in the Red Shirts affair, country member allowances claimed by city-based MPs, taxpayers billed for chauffeuring dogs and MPs bullying their staff, and not to forget the collision with a cyclist. Today there are more revelations with the recording of Mr Jury saying he used his position on the staff of former Senator Darren Hinch for personal financial gain, acting on privilege for knowledge of the Financial Services Royal Commission to sell his bank shares. This is an indirect contravention of the law. That he may well have broken the law for personal gain is an important matter that should be investigated. Of greater importance is that Australian voters have confidence in their votes, support candidates they want to support and have confidence in the accuracy and integrity of dem democratic elections. To Victorian voters I say this. Vote below the line in the upper house to make sure your preferences are directed to where you want them. The only safe vote above the line is one nation. We are not part of Mr Jury's cohort of fake parties, and you can be confident your preferences will remain with conservative candidates and like-minded parties. One Nation Victoria is also pledged to undertake electoral reform so that in the future Victorians can have confidence in the outcome. Failure to ensure election integrity is a betrayal of the Australian people's trust and since this is a function of law, it is up to us lawmakers to meet this expectation. 
One Nation has been very active in this space, introducing legislation in this effect last year, and I commend my colleague Senator Roberts for his diligent efforts to protect and enhance election integrity. So I ask the Senate to stand in condemnation of the Premier Dan Andrews for being associated with this manipulation of the system to mislead voters. I ask the Senate to stand in defence of free and fair elections which reflect the intent of the Australian people and which strengthen their faith in the principles and institutions of Australian democracy. Thank you, Senator Hanson. Senator White. Acting Deputy President, the Australian Labor Party has a long and proud history of strengthening our electoral system. And in that tradition, the government's priorities continue to to be improving transparency and accountability in our electoral law. Labor believes Australians deserve to know who is donating to candidates and political parties and who is influencing policy. That's why we have had legislation before the parliament for years to ensure the donation disclosure threshold is fixed at $1,000 instead of the current $15,200, and, we, and we're introducing real-time disclosure of donation. These proposed reforms have been referred to the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters as part of the standing uh, inquiry following each election. I know they maintain broad support. More broadly, though, some senators in this chamber, especially those attacking the Victorian Premier, may want to reflect on some of their own practices around fundraising and donations before lecturing others. Indeed, Acting Dep Deputy President, I could take the rest of my time on this urgency motion to point out the complete hi hypocrisy from Paul N. Hanson's One Nation in bringing on this debate today. I could spend my time stepping out how this sort of baseless attack is one thing, Senator Hanson's desperation in trying to improve her, her party's dismal polling pr prospects at the Victorian election this Saturday by pulling a stunt in the Senate. This motion is just a symptom of Senator Hanson's relevance deprivation syn syndrome after Pauline Hanson's One Nation flopped at the last federal election. Now Senator Hanson is worried about flopping in the uh, Victorian election this weekend, but Acting Deputy President, I will not waste my time addressing the long and ugly history of Pauline Hanson's One Nation. No, instead I I'd like to take, time, take a moment to point out to Senator Hanson and to the Senate just what the state Labor government in Victoria has achieved, and in doing so show Senator Hanson what good government in my state looks like. It looks like delivering on generational infrastructure projects, like removing 67 level crossings to make to make uh, commuting quicker, safer and cheaper, and building 6,300 new social and affordable homes with a view to deliver 16,000 in the next four years and building the Metro Tunnel. It looks like delivering on world-leading climate change policy by cutting emissions by 50 per cent by 2030 and net zero emissions by 2050, re-establishing a state energy uh, company to make energy cheaper and greener and, and making the largest tram network in the world powered by 100 per cent solar energy. It looks like providing reforms that makes Victoria the place to be. Whether you're a renter who now has access, be, who, who has access to better and protected rights, a casual worker who can now access a sick pay guarantee, or a kid in any government school who can now see a mental health professional. It looks like leading the nation in recognising and advancing the rights of Australia's First Nations people through a Victorian truth treaty telling and treaty process. It looks like leading the nation by being the first state to legislate voluntary assisted dying laws, now a norm in this country, which means people can die with dignity. Dignity. It means educating our young people for the benefit of all Victorians by making kindergarten free, making TAFE courses for in-demand occupations free and making it free to study nursing. Acting Deputy President, I could go on, but what I will say lastly is that the achievement I have outlined doesn't doesn't just look like good government, they are good government. And while it's clear that some people want to scramble to repair their own reput reputations by attacking the Victorian government and its achievement, the reality is that the Australian Labor Party in Victoria has a proven record of getting things done. And I have no doubt that if re-elected it will only build on the truly life-changing reforms that have made the lives of Victorians better. Thank you, Senator White. Senator Waters. Thanks very much, um, Acting Deputy President. The Greens will not be supporting this urgency motion today. Whilst we agree with Senator Hanson that group voting tickets are an abomination, and I'll come to that shortly, there's more than a whiff of electoral denialism to this motion. We know that the far right here in this parliament and around the world is waging a war on democracy and on free and fair elections, and we are not interested in being a part of that. Thanks to our AEC and our state and territory electoral commissions, Australia's elections have some of the highest integrity and transparency in the world. 
But none of that changes how appalling group voting tickets are. Group voting tickets enable preference whisperers like Mr Drury to allocate your preferences for you when you vote above the line. That means for the over 90 per cent of voters who do just that, when you put a party like the Health Party or the Sustainable Australia Party as your number one, you could very well end up sending your preferences to pro-gun parties like the Shooters and Fishers or anti-abortion parties like the Democratic Labor Party. And under these rules, the only way around this to actually control your own preferences is to vote below the line, number every box, risking an invalid vote if you make a mistake. Here in the federal parliament, the Greens were proud to be part of abolishing group voting tickets in 2016. In every other state and territory, the parliament has made the wise decision to abolish group voting tickets. Everyone knows group voting tickets need to end. Experts like Anthony Green hates them. Every state and territory government, including Labor governments uh, like Mr McGowan's in, uh, in WA, also hates them. The Greens hate them. Even the Liberals hate them. It's only the Victorian Labor government that has refused to abolish group voting tickets. My Victorian Greens colleagues have been the only members of the last Victorian parliament who've pushed to get rid of group voting tickets and have challenged both the Labor and the Liberal parties to commit to reform this undemocratic system before the election on Saturday. The group voting system will continue to distort the will of voters until Labor and the Liberals commit to reform. Victoria needs to get on with the job of abolishing group voting tickets, and the Greens will continue to campaign both here and in Victoria for improvements to our electoral system. But make no mistake, we won't team up with One Nation when it comes to questions of electoral integrity. Thank you, Senator Waters. Senator Babette. The Victorian Premier, Mr Daniel Andrews, doing dodgy deals with the election fixer, Mr Glenn Jury. Now, that is a classic case of someone someone shaking hands with the devil. That's what that is. Now, my problem, my problem is that I can't tell which one of these two is the devil. Is it A, Dictator Dan? Is it B, Election Rigger, Mr Glenn Jury? Or is it, as I suspect, all of the above? Now, Mr Daniel Andrews, the Premier of Victoria, has a record. He has a record that would make the devil himself blush, blush. He has racked up the worst debt of any state by far, by far, $170 billion predicted debt. More than Queensland, more than Tasmania, more than New South Wales combined. He has crippled, crippled our state's health system. People are dying at home waiting for an ambulance. Doesn't even show up. That's what's happening. He has overseen the harshest and the longest lockdowns on planet Earth. He was responsible for the highest COVID death rate in the country. He had a pregnant mother arrested in her home, but what for? What for for a Facebook post? He arrested and pepper sprayed senior citizens. He kept you from seeing your dying relative and mourning the loss of your loved ones. He had the police shoot innocent people with rubber bullets. He shut the playgrounds. He kept your children out of school. You were arrested for daring to go to the beach by yourself. He divided families and tried to keep you, keep you apart for Christmas. He used the pandemic as an excuse to turn my home state, the once great state of Victoria, into a living hell. That's what he did. And as if that was not enough, he himself is mired in scandal and scams that seem to have no end. You know what? There's something new in the paper every single day about Dan Andrews, Premier Dan Andrews. Here's one. Absolute disgrace. Uh, sorry, sorry, Senator Babette. Hang on. There is a point of order, Minister. Uh, Acting Deputy President. Um I'm sure Senator Babette's aware that there are uh, standing orders in relation to using props in the chamber. There is actually Senator Babette, but uh, please continue. I withdraw. Now, he's the subject of not one, not two, not three, not four, but five IBAC corruption inquiries. Five. Five. That's how many? Five. Now let me ask Labor members this. How many times should IBAC investigate your dodgy Victorian colleague before you find the moral courage to condemn him? How many times? <laughs> Are you waiting for a sixth corruption inquiry before you find your voice? Well, you might not have to wait for long as the Liberal Party 
has now just referred Dan Andrews, Premier Dan Andrews, to IBAC once again. Number six. Number six. Exactly. Number six. Now, how hellish does Victoria need to become before those of us here in Canberra will finally say enough is enough? Now, the scandal is not only that dictator, da dictator sorry, Premier Daniel Andrews, Premier, deals with dodgy Glenn Jury. The real scandal is that federal Labor protect the corrupt and tyrannical Premier Dan Andrews as one of their own. That's the real scandal. Now, as Mr Glenn Jury, this political fixer has boasted on camera to creating sham political parties in order to fool voters into voting for candidates and parties that will be cooperative to the Premier Dan Andrews, when these voters might have reasonably believed that they were actually voting to be against Dan Andrews. Now, this election fixing is permitted in the state of Victoria and it is outrageous. It is outrageous that we allow this to happen to the benefit of Daniel Andrews yes, and it beggars sorry. belief. Sorry, Senator Babbitt. You know where we're going to go here on a point of order, Minister. I mean, Senator Babbitt is entitled to be as disrespectful and, and uh, use pejorative language uh, to suit what no doubt is going to be a terrific uh, post on Telegram or whatever the sort of right wing posting is these days, but, but he, he is required in here to use uh, the Premier of Victoria's proper title, and you ought to show the Chamber a little bit more respect. Thank you, Minister. Senator Babbitt, uh, second time, but I would ask that you refer to whoever it is by their proper title, and I don't need any help. Thanks very much. Thank you. Now, how many reports of corruption, election fixing and incompetence need to come out of Victoria before someone in the federal Labor Party finds the courage to say something? How many? How many times? Now, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese took time out on Monday to thank Premier Daniel Andrews uh, on Twitter. He said, Dan, Premier Dan Andrews is building a better future for all Victorians. Now, the PM is surely having a lend of us. 60,000 Victorians fled Victoria last year, the most on record in a single year. Now, the future that Premier Dan Andrews is building is so good, so good, that Victorians they see their future elsewhere. How can the Prime Minister support Dan Andrews and keep a straight face? This is the same Prime Minister who promised to elevate the tone of politics. When Victorians go to the polls on Saturday, they should not reward Premier Dan Andrews, but instead sack him. Thank you, Senator Babbitt. Uh, Senator Roberts. Thank you. In the last few days, a video exposing preference manipulator Glenn Drury has been circulating on social media. Even the mouthpiece media was forced to acknowledge Drury's boasting confession that he manipulated election results for 25 years to sell seats in parliament. Manipulating preferences is morally reprehensible, and any party that participates in these dodgy deals is morally reprehensible. The scheme involves setting up fake parties and, in effect, selling preferences to parties that otherwise would not get enough votes to win. Most Victorians simply put a one above the line without realising where that party's preferences go. In the 2021 Western Australian election, Liberal Party preferences elected a Greens member. Now, I'm sure voters would not have taken that decision themselves. Any party pr participating in this scheme clearly puts power ahead of principle. Drury, Drury alumni include Legalised Cannabis Party, the Democratic Labor Party, Darren Hinch's Justice Party, Fiona Patton's Reason Party, the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party and, sadly, the Liberal Democrats. One Nation has not used Drury. We have lost elections where we significantly outpolled the winning party, get lost because Drury's dodgy preference deals. In 2014, Dan Andrews spoke to the Liberals about abolishing group voting tickets. It never happened. A lot of Dan Andrews' promises never happen. One Nation's clarity and directness may not suit some people at times, yet with One Nation, what you see is what you get. And I stress, voters who vote above the line enable parties to allocate your preferences. Instead, for a fair democracy, preferences should not be given to corrupt, undemocratic parties and should always belong to each voter. I urge all Victorians in this weekend's election to vote below the line, mark at least five squares, ten is better. That's the only way voters can control and allocate who gets preferences. We have one flag, we are one community, we are one nation, and we value and protect democracy. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Now the question is that the motion moved by Senator Hanson be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Aye. Against? No? Aye. Hmm. 
I think the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells. is that the motion is moved by Senator Hanson in relation to the urgency motion be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator O'Sullivan as teller for the ayes and Senator Pratt as teller for the noes.
Order. There have been 29 ayes and 31 noes. The matter is resolved in the negative.